I recently had a request to do something called a strong projectile point. That's the name of the point. Uh, it's a collector point. It's a very rare. It occurs in an area between Washington State and Oregon, primarily on an island, and I can't remember the island name. Um, I think I can put the name in the description box. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting point, so that's what I'm going to try with this biface that I inherited from somebody. I do believe these were made out of chert, so this is a chert. It's not a California chert, though, or an Oregon chert, I don't think. But it may have some translucency, so it may be interesting. Okay. So what is a collector point? Well, it's not the typical... Uh, this, they're named uh, in a, a non-typical manner, usually after the person who has it in the collection, right? Uh, this point is found in a private collection, primarily, where the examples are in private collections. Uh, the point's named after the original discoverer, I think. Mr. Strong. Anyway, I'll let it speak for itself as I flit nap it, and, or you can look at the thumbnail, obviously. It just looks like a big Revila point. Revila from Texas. I already have experience with a general shape, so. Theoretically, this will be not too difficult. Now, this is excellent quality stone. I think it is a heat treat. If not, it's one of the best pieces of chert that I have, it looks like. Yep. Let's see. I did something, but it didn't go. Hoping for some large flakes, but I guess I'll have to switch over to indirect percussion. Yeah. You can tell the previous owner did the same thing that I just did, which means that uh, he was probably using a bopper or a billet. Yeah, excellent, excellent material. Very similar to the stuff that I napped earlier on another video of excellent material. Okay, so I'm getting lucky on some of these bifaces from previous owners. This is not an artifact. This is from um, another napper. Okay. So the first step is to get it thinned down. It's already in the rough, correct shape. It's not a nodule, it's a biface which makes it relatively easy. As long as I remember to abrade enough. Some of these edges look like they're already abraded. It's 
getting really cold out right now. Temperature is dropping fast. So I think I'm not going to upload too many videos today. Or tonight, I should say. I'm going to go in and I'm going to wimp out and go in and uh, just be satisfied with what I've done so far this week on video. I was going to do some points off camera, but nah, might do one or two. Maybe one or two off camera just to, just to get more done quickly. I've been thinking about what else I'm going to do on video. Holidays are coming up. What else can I do? What, else, what interesting stuff can I do besides the stone tool woodworking? Which I am going to do some of it. I've got, I've got some free wood I can get here. So that's good. Uh, da, da, da. I need to do more drawings drawings on video I've got notes but I don't have them with me so I was going to do drawings of my notes and I don't think I have them with me I'll just have to make up some notes from scratch look on the internet again and uh, I'm thinking of doing more drawings of arrows on video. I don't think I've done a full drawing of an arrow. You know, so you guys can do replicas with dimensions. You'll have the dimensions to do the replicas with. Yeah, and sometimes the, uh, when I look on a site that has artifacts, sometimes they'll have a scale next to the item, which makes it easy. I can just do a screenshot of the of the item with the scale next to it, and I can uh, get all the dimensions from that scale, and then I can do a drawing of the arrow. Specifically, that's what I'll be looking at first. Make some arrows from the drawings. First, do the drawings with the dimensions, and then make the arrows on video, like I used to do. I have videos that uh, have arrows in them. I don't show the full process of making the arrows. I don't think I have the full process. You know, I show fletching and hafting and how to create uh, not how to create, but how to sand down the arrow shafts and straighten them and stuff. Add weight to them. I've got a couple videos or at least one video where I show how to add weight to the tip of the arrow. Uh, I think that's a river cane or arrow bamboo arrow video. I think you can just look up Jack Crafty cane arrows or something like that.
Yeah, I have a lot of notes on arrows from the southwest because a lot of those are preserved in dry caves. There's a lot of good artifacts preserved in the southwest in the dry caves. Full arrows and full bows in some cases. Hundreds of years old. Well, let's see, what is it? Over a thousand years old. Anyway, I think that this particular point was not not very thin, so it's going to be relatively easy peasy. Relatively so. Yeah, excellent, excellent material. Sweet, sweet, sweet. thin down this base without having to strike it hard enough to break it in half without should be able to thin it down without worrying about end shock but for some reason it doesn't want to cooperate This end, maybe I'm not braiding enough. I should probably be using pressure. But this is so much easier. So much easier to hit it with percussion. Okay. So yeah, even it up. I probably don't need to thin it down more than that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I mentioned this was a request. We shall see. How it turns out. If it turns out well, I'll make more. I'm a little bit tired today, so I'm probably not going to talk too much or do too much yip yep on this video. There's no reason for me to be tired, so I don't know. Sudden fatigue syndrome. All of a sudden, I feel tired. Anybody else ever get that? You, know, you might say, yeah, right after I work out. <laughs> yeah, that too. I didn't work out though. doing here I'm just trying to regularize it now that I've gotten most of the thinness taken care of but I'm not doing that well because in the process of regularizing I'm supposed to uh, supposed to smoothen out the surface but it's not getting smoothened that side's okay but this side still has a lot of chatter yeah 
Oh well. Oh well, just go straight to pressure flaking. Even though there's chatter on the blade. Yep. Ooh, it pressure flakes nicely. I gotta save some of this stuff for doing Cody points. Yep. I haven't done a Scots bluff in a long time. And I still need to do some Eden points. Practice up on those. Yeah, I just don't like doing them because they take me forever. I've done a few in the past, and the ones that came out well it took over three hours a piece. Oh, yeah. Three hours on one point. I'd rather do I'd rather spend 30 minutes. Not three hours. And that's I thought I was doing well. Yeah. Look at the clock and don't and it's three hours gone by. This was a while ago. How I would remember three hours, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that long, but it's I, I have that three hours in my head. Yeah. Anyway, any kind of parallel flaking or collateral flaking or any type of regular flaking pattern requires that I spend an arm an enormous amount of time on the preform. Yeah. I don't know if it's just me or what, but if I want it to look perfect, everything's got to be Everything's got to be so perfect in the preform stage that it looks like a finished piece already. So I'll spend an hour and a half on the finish on the preform and then another hour and a half to do the finishing. It's a long time. Hopefully I can do better than that. I could just put this aside and use it for something else, but no. Yeah, I want to nap some good stuff on video for a change. Yeah. So much nicer. I do want to clean up this side a little bit. A little bit more, get rid of some of that chatter. Okay. I think I've ground the living daylight daylights out of that one. I got my sander in. It wears down really fast, especially when I have bits of rock stuck in the tip. It wears down my sanding belts really, really fast. And that's no fun. When I need my sander, I need it. I don't want to be having to deal with a clogged up or dull sanding belt. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get this to cooperate. Yeah, yeah, okay. If it looks any better. Get rid of some of those delicate edges. It's going to be constricted in that area anyway.
Are my hands cold or what? I don't know. Should be able to get a bold, wide flake. Yeah, all right. Kind of like that. Kind of, sort of. Did I say this was a heat treat? Yeah, I think I did, but I don't know. It's kind of acting funny, like it's a raw piece. hard to grind down and the steel is slipping slipping on this we'll see we'll see what happens Come on now. Ooh, almost got, almost got everything on that pass. There we go. Perfect. Oh yes. Golly, that's sweet. I can't believe it. Yeah. I was just snapping something I deleted a video before this, snapping something that was like a, uh, a torture session. I didn't want to upload it. Two hours of torture on a slab, kind of like this one. Let's see. I'll nap this one. That's next slab on video. How's that? This one's called Dead Camel Nevada. I don't know if that's Dead Camel Chert from Nevada or Dead Camel Town City. Dead Camel City? I don't know. Someone will tell me. I'm going to nap this. The other piece was another uh, slab of this, I think. Same stuff. And it has defects in it. So right when I'm thinking it's going to be finished, something snaps. Yeah. Tip snaps off. Barb snaps off. Base snaps off. Something will snap. But it is nappable. So got no excuses Oh, this is going to look good. We'll see. All right, so uh, da, 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 da. the dimensions on this, I think they average three to one to three. Three inches long by one inch wide. But I'll make it a little bit bigger because I'm going to go with the flow on this one. I got to do more research on that particular style to get the average size. If I like it, I'll do more. I think I've already mentioned that one. I mentioned that fact. Or, yeah. What's my favorite point to nap? Have I answered that one? I mean, I like the Edwards arrowhead. I like the Frio. Very similar in concept to each other. But is there a favorite? I know Clovis is not my favorite, although I've done plenty. And uh, if I do a lot, they get easy. So it becomes... A no-brainer after a little while as long as I don't have to do any serious fluting on it serious fluting kind of turns it into a bummer because then I gotta then I gotta focus too much on this on the thinning flakes from the base and try to do something that looks like a flute and if I come up with a, come up with a good flute that I know I can't do over again I had to build the point around the flute or you know reduce everything around the flute that kind of thing yeah but just a straightforward clovis with just maybe one flute on one side and nothing on the other and the one that's on the one side is only halfway up or less. 
Those are a no-brainer. They're not bad. Same with Dalton. If I don't have to work too hard on the Dalton. If it doesn't have serrations or anything, it's pretty straightforward. And a lot of my failed Clovises become Daltons. I just go, hey. Eh. Didn't do the thinning flute very well. It went up like one-tenth of the way. I can do a Dalton. Yeah. So now Daltons are my favorite. Yeah. Whichever I can make becomes my sudden favorite. So to answer that question, I don't have an answer. Yeah. Except Frio and Edwards. Those two are the ones I, I will default to other other than my art artsy points. But I don't like I mean I don't like I do like it. I don't want to do any serrations right now. Not in the mood this week to do anything with serrations, but I'm I'm gonna put some serrations on this one. But that's it. That's it. Yep. <laughs> I've been watching. I've been watching other nappers. I'm watching you. I'm keeping an eye on you guys. You guys and your shenanigans over there. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are these new nappers doing? What kind of shenanigans? What am I talking about? Hmm? Huh? 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 Making reproductions. Yeah. I don't see no art pieces. Everyone's trying to do reproductions. Why is that? Shenanigans? I'm doing that too. Well, I'm just saying that because some people think it is. I got a question lately, like, what is, what's the sense, what is the attraction or what is the appeal of making duplicates of real ones? Just go out and find them or go to a museum and look at them or something like that. What's the fascination with making duplicates or fakes? They don't want to say the bad word. They don't want to say the F word, fakes. Attraction is they're interesting. Yeah, very interesting. It's a it's a solution to a problem. Solution to the problem of empty stomachs need to eat, and a solution to the problem of how do we defend ourselves against these psychos that make war on everybody? Hmm? How do we defend ourselves? against the psychos. How do we prey on the predators? Well, this is a this is one solution to that problem. Blades made of stone. And not just any blades. Highly highly specialized blades with highly made with highly specialized tools in many cases. Interesting, very interesting, fascinating, as Mr. Spock would say. Oh yeah, I'm one of those guys that watched the Star Trek, the original TV series, every night. 
The reruns, I don't care. My mom would say, you've seen this one before. I know, isn't it great? It's not like my fourth time watching it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Enough for this particular segment. I'll continue on the next one. All right, so yeah, when I was little, I used to watch episodes of Star Trek over and over and over. Whenever there was a... Whenever the episode was on, I'd watch it, no matter if I'd seen it before a hundred times. And back then, we used to have a TV guide in print. A printed TV guide, not a digital one. It was like in a little magazine. A little miniature, little booklet. Like the Reader's Digest, same size. I used to get Reader's Digest and the TV guide. Right next to each other at the checkout counter. In the Farmer's Almanac. Farmer's Almanac, TV Guide, and whatever else I said. Reader's Digest. Although I stopped reading the Reader's Digest because there are too many, too many works of fiction on there. I don't really like reading fiction. I like reading boring technical stuff. Yeah, I'm one of the guys that reads the instruction manual whenever I get something new that I never got before. I don't try to figure it out. I read the instructions. Yeah. Ah, so that's what that little doohickey is for. I would have never figured that out. Amazing. Yeah, I'm a little slow on the uptake sometimes. I just saw a video of how to open a can, one of those pop-top cans, yeah, with another can using the bottom of the other can. You can pop it open. Stack one can on top of the other and pop the lower can's lid or lower can's little tab open. Yeah. I don't know what they call that on... On the interzones, but it's there. You guys are going to probably force me to put a link up. What are you talking about, man? Yeah. I probably can't find it again. Just like everything else that I look up on the internet, I don't write down where it comes from. I just have it stored in my head. Yep. In a big old soup. And then when I try to remember... The soup's already been cooking too long, so you can't tell what's in there. It's all mushy. It's all mushy together. It used to have carrots and potatoes and pasta. But now it looks like gravy because I let it sit too long. Looks that's how that's how my brain works. Yep. I know what it is for a little while, but it sits in my brain really long and it becomes like gravy. Just a thick Ooze. <laughs> anyway, let's see. What am I going to do here? Am I going to pressure flick this whole thing? I don't want to. I don't want to pressure flick the whole thing because it's boring. Not only for you, but for me too. Drudgery. Drudgery and misery. And I don't know why I'm, I spent so much time on the tip and I, I'm now knocking it back some more. Yeah. I'm going to work on the tip some more. All right. So this is probably a little bit too wide, but I'm going to put some nasty serrations. So I need it to be kind of wide. Yeah. Put in some nasty serrations on this one. Why do I say nasty? You should say cool. It's going to be awesome. Awesome serrations, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's going to be awesome serration time. But not yet. I still got to do some shaping, some thinning. 
without any snappages. I'm hitting a point of snappage right now. This little POS. Yeah. Some of you caught on. Some of you guys remember. You hit down here, it's a point of snappage because it could cause an end snap. You didn't know that? Point of snappage is not only where you hit, it could be like way far away. You, the actual snap could be far away from your point of snappage. Yeah. So this is a little POS down here. The tip could go. Yeah, if I'm not careful, the tip could go. Just like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so. From memory, I'm trying to remember. It looks a little bit too wide. But I, I gotta symmetrize it first. That's the rule. Oh, but not like that. I have no excuses. This is excellent material. Yeah. Excellent material. Beautiful. Can't complain. If I do, I'm dumb. If I complain about this stuff. It's ridiculous if I do that. But, uh, I need to be more careful because it doesn't seem to be going my way. Yeah, not all the time. That was good. I'm trying to put in some pretty flakes, you know? And for some reason, it goes, nah, -uh. no. I am pretty, but I'm not cooperative. Yeah, story of my life. Let's see. I got one more area. Here we go. kind of wanting to make this perfect but I, I should just go go for it just go to town on it and don't worry about it yeah I don't know what I'm worried about I think these were transitional archaic up to historic they don't know the dates on these things because they're all like surface finds or something. They're thinking they're, these are relatively recent, you know, late stage at little dark points, you know, late in the, late for at little darts. Probably use alongside of regular arrows. Yeah, I say regular arrows. I should just say right alongside arrows shot from bows some guys are using at little darts and at laddles and some guys are using bows right side by side next to each other yep they're finding out that that was not uncommon not uncommon and when I went to school I was taught not to use that expression don't use the not uncommon just say not common and that's it. We all went. <laughs> now we know what we are going to do. <laughs> oh, yes. You say not to do it? Now I know what to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. If you don't want me to do it, I'm going to do that. Yeah, then those people grow up and they get on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't want me to behave that way? Well, guess what? Now you just you just outlined my code of conduct. Yep. You don't want me to behave that way. That's what I'm going to do. 
now my motto. Whatever you don't like, I'm gonna do that. That's what I learned. 21st century. The 21st century code of conduct. Oh, you don't like it? Here, have some more. Here, I'm gonna give you some more. You, you don't like it? You still don't like it? I'm gonna give you more. Oh yeah. How do you like them apples? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going slow on this one because I'm going by memory. If I take too much off, I can't put it back on. That's what my shop teacher used to tell me. You can always take a little bit off, but you can't put it back on. So I'm going to take a little bit off. At a time. A little bit, little bit. No, not yet. I was gonna I was gonna hit that without abrading it. And break my own rules. Break everybody's rules up that, that way. I could I could say. You want me to abrade it? Well that's exactly what I'm not gonna do then. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> How you like them apples? Yeah. Makes me happy. I know it irritates the heck out of you, but it makes me happy. That's what I learned in the 21st century. It's amazing. Amazing how it turned out. We have, for a long time, it was said that uh, the information age we're gonna have access to knowledge. Instant access and connectivity to anyone around the world. Instant access to knowledge, to cultures, to how to's and hacks and things that can make our lives easier. And what happened? Armies of people that make your life more miserable. Yeah. Armies. Or should I say hordes? Because they're not that organized. Hordes making your life miserable. In the age of information. And a lot of them are ignoramuses. They got their fingertips on the world, right? They can go anywhere they want. You know where to go? You know where to go? Echo chambers. Yeah. Hug boxes. Yeah. Safe spaces. It's like, what the heck? What in the world is going on? Is that what, is that what we are? Or is that just the psychos? I think we know the answer to that question. It's not who we are. A lot of us choose to watch guys do flit napping. Those are the cool ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I biased? Of course. Am I wrong? Ha, ha, ha. Where's the lie? Yeah. Where is it? Okay. I got to pressure flake it now, man, because I can't go any thinner than that without looking stupid. I might be able to thin it down a little bit more right there. Underneath right there. Yeah, I might be able to, but let's just get the, uh, the outline worked out. See what happens. Regularize it and try to pressure flake it without causing a bunch of Crushing, how's that? I'm crushing it like crazy. And not in a good way. Yeah, the good thing is we have access to all this knowledge, but it's slowly being, it's slowly being 
contaminated. How? Well, I've talked about it before. The lack of intellectual hygiene. Yeah. It's all thought experiments. We got access to all this knowledge and we end up constructing thought experiments, fictions, and make-believes. Did we already read the, ent the entire internet? Did we already do it? Did we already exhaust it? No matter how much information is put on the internet, it is absorbed within five seconds. And it's like, meh, meh. The only thing interesting is what, what we can make up in our minds. No one interested in facts. No, not interested in facts or nothing. No. We want to be like Einstein with his thought experiments and discover relativity. Yeah. Just by thinking about it. Watch, they watch videos like how to survive in a tent in the winter. In the winter. Winter tenting. There's like millions of views on how to be in a tent in the winter. I'm like, okay, now what's going on with this? Let me let me let me go look and see. Yeah, sure enough, it's a guy. It's cold. He's in a tent. It's a storm, and he goes, It's a storm. Oh no. Hey my dog. Come in here, buddy. It's a storm outside. Maybe I'm weird, but I was winter camping when I was 11 years old in the Boy Scouts and other places. Other places means, you know, my backyard. Yeah, pitch a, pitch a tent in the winter. No problem. My mom would go to the secondhand store and give me a tent. Yeah. Yeah, it leaked and everything, but, you know, it's cool. It's fine. I didn't, I did not stay overnight in the backyard. I did stay overnight in the camp out, so. Yeah, we were only 11 years old, a bunch of kids running around in the wintertime. Building campfires and pioneering projects and stuff. And here, they, here these guys are going, yeah, I just, uh, I just learned how to do this not long ago. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out in a storm now because I know how to do it. Yep, two million views. Thank you for the five thousand bucks. Yep. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go and uh, see if I can step in the mud puddle with boots on. Yeah. It's kind of deep. That mud puddle looks kind of deep. I'm gonna, I don't know if I can do it. Get some boots. Yeah, I'm gonna get some boots and step in the mud puddle. <laughs> Thank you. Two million views, 5,000 bucks each. Million, yeah. Thank you. See, what else can I do? That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what we have in the 21st century. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, and they, and they have these guys out there surviving. One tent inside the other tent. They think, hey, that's a technological marvel, put a one tent inside the other. That's just amazing. Technological marvel. <laughs> that's what I did when I worked on site in Indiana. I was there all winter. Put a tent inside another tent. This was in 2001. This is before the internet. 
basically. Yeah, works well. I mean, I gotta admit, it does work well. Tent inside of tent. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that it got too dry. Yeah, you put a space heater in the tents and it just dries them right out. It dries you out. You're sitting there with a nose that gets dried out so fast it'll make your head spin and it does literally make your head spin. It gives you a headache. What did I do about it? Nothing. I just adjusted to it, I suppose. Dealt with the headaches for a few weeks and that was it. Eventually you get used to it. The dryness inside the tent. And you can't put a humidifier in there because it, that condensation builds up on the outside or on the inside of the tent and drips down onto the floor. And then you got a wet floor. That's no fun because then, because then you get a soggy sleeping bag and so, so, soggy uh, sleeping pad and mold. You start getting mold. Yeah. In the middle of winter. It's true. You keep it warm and moist in there, it's going to have mold even in January. You're not safe from the mold and mildew. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do? One thing that is cool is the heaters. The oil lamp heaters and stuff like that. You can create, you can uh, construct a heater with Crisco. You can fuel a lamp with Crisco for days. For days and days. If you didn't know, just look it up. It's there. That's one thing that's cool. You know, you get to look at see look and see what people have for solutions. And I was looking to see what solutions I have for this winter. If I want to heat something up in an emergency, I should get some Crisco. Put a candle in it. Turn it on. A little bit of heat for days. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta learn what to do without electricity. That's one thing I have not had much practice with. I know some things about living without electricity, but I need a lot more learning on that. Off grid, completely off grid, no solar panel, nothing like that. Just completely off grid, no, no electrical, except maybe a little charger for my phone, turn my car on, charge my phone, that's it. That's it. If I get a computer, if I feel like I'm responsible enough to have a computer again, get a computer, charge that sucker up, and do some video editing. Some people, you know, they're nice about it. They hint, I'll help you do some video editing. Hint, hint, hint. What are you trying to say, man? Seen some wrong my videos? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> it's low tech, okay? Excuse me, it's low tech. Low, it's just off grid videos, okay? Yeah. Just pretend I'm off grid. It's off grid video making. It's my excuse. Really? <laughs> no, no, it's not really. Just kidding. I'm not off grid with my videos, you kidding me? I'm still trying to find good Wi Fi. I mean, I got some okay here, but it's intermittent. It used to be steady here in this area where I'm at now. It was excellent, but now it's intermittent. 
think they do it on purpose so you have to switch to the 5G or something. Right? I got a 4G phone. I think I got a 4G. Georgie Porgy 4G. Yeah. Anybody know what who Georgie Porgy is? You won't know unless you're a boomer. Georgie Porgy Pudding Pie. Something like that. If you don't know, ask your dad. Yeah. Georgie Porgy 4G. That's what I got on my phone. All right, what are we going to do here? We're going to, we're starting to get the general shape that I want, that I remember on video, not video, from the interzones when I looked it up. Interwebs. Yeah. I like it. I'm having fun with this particular material. I don't want to wrap it up too soon because it's a rare treat to get this material where I can sharpen it. I can really, really sharpen this stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. It makes me want to get out some natural material tools and some antler. Yeah. Sharpen this sucker up really good. Oh, yeah. I, I can see that antler sharpens this up really, really nice. Yes, it does. I will admit, I will concede, I will acquiesce. Yes, I will submit. It's funny how there are so many words for that. You would think that we live in an authoritarian world, huh? So many words for submission. Yeah. Doop -de -doop -doo 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 -doo. All right, so I think I need my spatula tool. I'm going to need my spatula tool for the next stage. What do you think? Uh, who asked you? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to need the spatula tool. All right, so here we go. Let's see if I can do this without messing it up. To a, off to a good start or no? I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. I'm going to go slow on this side because I don't want to mess it up. Can you see what I'm doing? No? Good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we can do that on the other side. That's the trick. And I don't know if these were symmetrical or not. I'm gonna assume no. Because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna symmetrize it. I'm just gonna Put in the serrations with non symmetrization. Non symmetrization. Yeah. It's a word. Don't worry. Your teacher won't won't give you they won't give, she won't give you an F. Because it's a word. It's a flit napping word. You just tell her. Yeah. My audience is not that young. Everybody's old like me, I know. I, I was trying to expand my audience into the younger at one time. How? Uh, by doing a lot of beginner 
beginner videos stuff. And he was doing beginner video stuff. That attracts younger audiences. Although. It doesn't matter how old you are. But I notice if you start doing more. If I start doing more. Uh, beginner stuff. I get younger people coming in going. Oh yeah. That's how they did it. Yeah that's how they did it. Well, it is kind of how they did it, but not exactly. Then they get smart. They start to, I mean, smart in quotation marks. They go, that's how you did it, but you're not using the right tools. What are you doing? This is not, this is not antler. <laughs> All right. I think that's enough for this segment. I'm going to finish it up on the next one. All right, hopefully this video is long enough to keep you guys occupied for a little while. Don't fall asleep on me now. Because uh, you're going to make me jealous. Yeah. Don't fall asleep on me, you make me jealous. I need to go to sleep. As you can tell, there's nobody out here. Not even the little Jack neighbor. Little neighbor Jack. Jack, Jack. Yeah, they call him Jack Jack, just like on The Incredibles. Yep. Okay, Copper. I know, I know you're slick, but you ain't that slick. Somehow I stole this. There we go. Can you see? No. Yeah, I suppose I'll zoom in. I don't really know what I'm doing, but, you know, got to zoom in anyway. I'm not using antler. Can I do this with the antler? Oh, yeah. Just watch my Allergic Hobbit channel. I think I got one. Did I do something similar to this? I don't know if I should put a little serration on the base of that. See how little cute that little serration is in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I do that. I do that with natural tools. I think I got one. If I don't get one over there on Allergic Hobbit channel, just tell me. I'll put in a natural tool serration video. Because I need to go over there anyway and mess with that channel. I'm going to mess it. I need to get up to a thousand subscribers. Yeah. It's pretty close already. I haven't even looked at it. I, I, I barely even look at that channel. and uh, I've got almost a thousand subscribers. It's amazing. It really is. Truly amazing. The poor guys over there are asking me questions and stuff over there. I don't answer nothing. Why? Because I could spend two days over there. I could spend two days over there easy looking at all the comments. Maybe I'll do that when I'm sitting on the couch after eating a bunch of turkey. You got the turkey hangover. Yeah, sit there. I'll go over to Allergic Hobbit and see what that's doing. See what trouble that can stir up. See if there's any annoying antler people, because they're not all cool. I got some annoying ones over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted me to continue talking smack about the antler people. I said, no problem, dude. Yeah. No problem at all. <laughs> oh, 
horn. I didn't like to use horn. Are you horny? <laughs> making fun of me. Yeah, I'm making fun of you. You horny napper? Yeah. I'm making fun of you all day. Okay, my phone ran out of charge, uh, but I'm pretty much done with it. I'm just going to tack this on to the end. It's pretty much done. I could do a little bit more work on the tip. I don't know when it cut out. I didn't review the film. I got like 3%. I just barely charged it back up. But yeah. I'm just going to leave it this way. I might work on it off camera a little bit. On the tip so it's more pointy and thin although I think there are two different types of tips uh, one that's kind of dull and then or one that's kind of um, obtuse and one that's very pointed but I want to do it like in the middle and then thin it down some more but I'm not going to do it on this segment because uh, I, I got to go to bed I got to upload this and then take care of the auction tomorrow Okay, so that's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Let's see. <laughs> I need a thumbnail. Is that good? Dum, 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 dum. Can't see the serrations. I should do this off camera. Yeah. Dum, 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 dum. But I'm going to film everything. Ooh, nice and translucent. Nice. Okay.